Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to show you how we can quickly and easily create an API in Java using Spring Boot. So I will just first create a new project and we use a Spring Initializer. Let's call this project Spring API. We're going to be using Java. I'm going to be using Maven. Group fine. That fit fine. I'm going to be using Java 17, which should be fine. And for dependencies, the one dependency we're going to be needing is Spring Web. So I would just add a Spring Web, finish, and let the project load. So we now have a very simple Spring based project, and it might take a few minutes for your project to load the first time, or maybe to get all dependencies, get everything set up. But otherwise, we will then have a Spring API folder with most importantly our source, main, Java, and then inside com example Spring API, we have the Spring application which is a very spring setup for a basic spring boot application that then starts our public void main from this position. So to then create our REST API, I would add a few folders just to create a basic structure. So I would create an API folder and I would create a service folder because I would be using the basic structure of the API and then have some kind of service handling, kind of like the backend setup for this API. Inside my API folder, I would then also have another folder, oh, we'll call them packages, it's more the same thing, but I would then have a controller. And I would have a model. Not like that, let's actually take a look at the project files instead. And I would also have my like that. So inside the API package, I have both my controller and my model package. So inside my controller, I would create a new Java class. And let's say in this case, we are building a basic API to get some user data. So I might be creating a user controller. I would create a model for our user. And inside services, I would create a user service. We would then create a very simple user. So let me just quickly construct a user. And here we go. So now I have very basic user. I have a user ID, a name, an age, and an email. I have constructor taking in all these parameters. I have getters and setters for all of my values. So what I would then very simply do is inside my user controller, I would then highlight this user controller as an REST controller. And if you just add all the old sacks, we have our REST controller with add REST controller. And I would then also for my service, just add it as a service. But then very simply inside my REST controller, I would then create a public method. So I'll do public, and then I would like it to return, in this case, just a user. And I would just call it get user example. And I would then make this method into an get mapping, which means we can make get calls to this API setup to get this information. And I would then in this example, just very simply create a request parameter, which is kind of the input we give to our API to tell in this case, which user would like to get. So I would do a request parameter where I would do it as an integer ID. We would then just very simply inside this method, just return some user based on some ID. And I would then create my service. So I would do a private user service, user service. I would then use construct injection to do, yeah, to set up this service. So I would do a public user controller, taking in a user service, user service, and then my this.user service equal my user service. And I will then add an add auto wired for the struct injection to then inject my user service service into this controller. And I will then simply here just return my user service dot get user 
based on the ID. And of course, we haven't created this method yet. So I would create method in user. And now we're getting to a point where it's not very realistic because normally you probably have this, in this service connect to some kind of database and then actually extract some users might have some SQL queries. To kind of simulate this database setup, I would just in here create a private list of users called user list. And I would then inside a empty constructor just create a new so the use list equals new array list. I will then create a few users. So do user 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 equals new user and I'll get an ID of one, a name of beta an age of 32 and an email of eda at mail.com and let me just add a few more users like that so and i will have five users with different ids different names different ages different emails i then add all these users to my user list i would then very simply whenever i get this get user call to my service I would just simply go through my, I'm just going to do a simple for loop. That's very simple. So we go through our, so user, user in our user list. Simply do if the ID from the input is the same as our user dot get ID, then we just simply return this user. Otherwise we would return something. And then actually there's quite a few different ways we can do this a bit more optimal. Yeah, let's actually just do it properly. So instead of actually returning a user here, I would be returning an optional. Optional containing a user. And I would then return an, I would create a new optional. So optional, optional. Equal and optional dot empty. We would then instead of just returning our user, we then set our optional to be equal to optional dot of our specified user, and we then return our optional. And in case we actually never hit any other optional, or we don't hit any user, I'll just return my optional like that. And in here, instead of just turning this user, because it's not going to be a user, it's going to be an optional, I would then have my, and again, an optional user equal to our user service that get user. And we would then simply say if our optional or if our user dot is present, we then return our user dot dot get and then cast it to a user. Otherwise we would return let's just return null. And this is definitely not the best way of doing it. Because normally we probably wouldn't just return a user directly, we'd probably return some kinder entity with some kind of network code so we can define that in case the user is not present instead of just returning the user we would return a specific code so we might return a content not found or something like that but for now i think this is just a simple setup so it should be fine so let me actually just open postman so we can actually check this works so we now have postman running and one last thing instead of just have our get mapping we run a default that actually add a path so we just add user so now, when you run the program, if I didn't make any mistakes, we should be able to have our API running on localhost port 8080, as we see here. We can now do localhost port 8080 slash 
user. And we can then pass it a query parameter for ID. And let's just try doing ID1. So here you can see the actual API call we're doing. So localhost port 8080 slash user with the parameter of ID1. And as we can see here, we actually end up getting our ID1, which is IDA32, and with the specified email. And if we go back into the service, we can also see that it is actually matching correct. And then just to check it works, let's change and let's do five, for example. We now get five EVA nine, which matches. Let's actually check the setup we did without any users. So for example, six, in this case, we just return null, which ends up returning nothing, which is not perfect and definitely not the best. As mentioned, we might actually want to change instead of having the response status be 200 okay, we could probably be, I, I don't remember all the, the numbers in my head, but I think at least there's something called like partial data or data not found, something like that. So actually showcase that something's not here. Or maybe you would actually just like it, Wanted like this, where we just have a setup where if you try to request something that's not there, return nothing, because that's also kind of logical and makes sense. But this is the entire setup of our Spring based API in Java, which I think is a very simple and very quick setup where we actually have a simple controller, a model, and a service, and we then simply connect it through Spring some basic spring principles like for example inside our controller we did construct injection injecting our service into our controller we then simply call it we use an optional which allows us to simply check as long as the user is present return the user otherwise return null return nothing so i think this is a very good showcase of a very powerful tool a very powerful library spring boot which can be used for creating some very simple and very nice rest apis with plain java so if you enjoyed this quick showcase or relatively quick showcase please leave a like and subscribe and i wish you all a wonderful day